Today at Gadget Class, we're going to put a Song Yi 100 watt, 880 gallon per hour submersible water pump to the ultimate test. I'm going to compare it side by side with my uh, Eco Pump 396 gallons per hour pump. This pump has been sitting in water um, used uh, about once a month for about a year now. And we're going to put it side by side in a bucket of water, see how high each one of these shoot, and see what the, the differences are and uh, what kind of performance gains you're going to get from a higher wattage pump here. So let's take a look at what you get in the box here. It is quite a bit heavier. You can tell by the wrinkling of the box that um, there's a heavy apparatus in there. It actually wants to uh, fall out of the box and uh, all of this damage to the box happened from it uh, rolling around the Amazon package. So in the box you get your pump here. It's a nice uh, beefy, beefy pump. It easily weighs um, twice or more the weight of the Eco Pump. And we've also got a quick instruction manual. Nothing fancy there. We got our uh, little rubber baby bumper, little suction cup feet, and a half inch barb output fitting. The Eco Pump came with uh, like two each of like three eighths, half inch, and uh, like a little fan uh, adapter. With this one, all you're getting is the half inch. That's the one most people are going to use with this size pump, anyways, because it's more going to be used for uh, aquarium, fish pond, and uh, like hydroponic setups. So uh, let's take a look at the actual pump itself. Um, this one does not have a uh, a filter element in the front. So unlike the Eco Pump, which has a nice big filter in the front to filter out uh, you know various pond scums and leaves and all that, the uh, Song Yi does not have that. You can buy one of those little uh, filter sponges and put it in there. Uh, that won't be an issue at all. Something the Song Yi does have that the Eco Pump does not is a little uh, lever here to uh, shut off or increase the flow um, all the way down to pretty much zero there. Uh, not that you'd ever want to do that, but if you wanted to limit the flow a little bit, you can do that with this pump. Taking a look at the impeller and uh, build of the pump itself, let's focus in on that and increase the ISO a little bit. One thing I did notice is that this, this part here, um, if you don't get that O-ring down in there just right, it tends to like pop up a little bit. Uh, not that that's going to be an issue because the water is just going through there anyway. Um, just be careful when you're putting it back together that you get that O-ring to seat down in the body of the pump there. That part just comes up. You got the little uh, little rubber baby bumper for the, the pump impeller goes into that little slot right there. We'll pull out the impeller. Well, there's the pump shaft right there. Pump impeller, just a large magnet. And the impeller itself does turn about half a turn on the magnetic uh, part there. So I guess that would help if, in case the part of it binds up, your pump impeller has a little bit of movement to it, so it's less likely to break on whatever sort of uh, internal shaft mechanism it has in there. And then the other side of the pump shaft goes down and hits another rubber bumper in the back of the pump there. So that's pretty basic. A lot of them operate like that. Um, I do believe the uh, Eco Pump uses ceramic parts, whereas these are all plastic. In the back of the pump, you can see the epoxy enclosure there for the actual um, transformer elements of the pump. So that's it for the build. Uh, pretty basic setup. Not much to it. The fact that you can take it apart and clean it is a huge plus. And you, it does, uh, you can feel the, the cogging of the, the element pretty good. To me that means it's uh, got a pretty, pretty good uh, stator element design. We'll put our rubber baby bumper back on there. And we'll put this back on there. And here's what I'm talking about. See that O-ring on there? You want to make sure that it does not bind on the housing and actually goes all the way down in. Now 
like so. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put both of these in a bucket of water with their half-inch port, and we'll see what kind of a uh, kind of launching height we can get. This is going to be both sitting side by side in a bucket of water, both with their half-inch output fitting on them. One thing I did notice about the the Song Yi is that the cord is a very light gauge. You know, that's maybe uh, 14 gauge wire right there. Uh, very uh, thin plug versus the eco pump, which has a nice thick grounded uh, plug on it. So we'll see if that's going to be an issue or not here. That's both pumps going side by side. Can't really tell which is doing which, so I'm going to set up one at a time. Alright, let's test the Song Yi. The pump head is submerged under about seven inches of water be good representation of how it's going to work um, if you actually put it in a pond just uh, to spray water up for aeration. So it'll uh, spray more and more as it gets as it drains the water out of the bucket but right there we're getting about nine inches nine inches of spray out of the bucket or out of the top of the bucket. And as, the, as that water empties out of the bucket, it's going to go higher and higher, up to four feet, and then it ran out of water. So it looks like it'll do about four feet. That to the eco pump under the same amount of water. Eco pump is not managing to do much at all there. Alright, so there's the eco pump at full spray level. There's no water obstruction at all, and it's barely going a foot and a half there. A total lift test with a three quarter inch hose. I've just got a half inch bar fitting screwed down into the pump, going to an adapter to a hose going up. I had to break out my 12 foot ladder because it easily went over the eight foot ladder. So right at the top of that ladder where that hose spigot is, that's about 12 feet. And I do have the foot increments marked right there. The topmost mark up there is 11 feet and it's sitting higher than that. So I got up to about 14 feet when it would actually uh, prime and pump. That right there is uh, technically about 10 feet, but it easily did over 12 feet self-priming straight up. So that's a pretty good pump. If it'll pump through a three-quarter inch hose straight up um, and self-prime, that's good for an impeller pump. So despite the, uh, the semi-weak cord here, and the fact that it doesn't come with a filter or all the attachments that the eco pump does, um, it does have plenty of power. So I think for the price, it's probably worth the money, especially if you're doing a hydroponic setup or you're going to be using it in just a straight aquarium. I think it'll do the job just fine. So make sure you hit yes if you found this review helpful. Hit the thumbs up button on the YouTube channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel.